It's time to watch tales of magic. It's time to have lots of fun. So come follow me and you will see all your dreams become reality. Don't be sad, things aren't bad. They only seem to be. You'll find that life's a party. Just you wait and see. There's fun for you and me. You will see. Lift your head and you'll see magic and the way that you would like things to be. Flying high. Let your dreams just take you for a ride. We'll travel far and wide. Come along, cause these tales of magic are fun tales of magic. They'll really take you flying. Hansel and Gretel, a favorite story from the Brothers Grimm. Once upon a time, deep in the forests of Germany, there lived a woodcutter, his two children, and their stepmother. Times were hard for the woodcutter, and there was never enough to eat. It was not a happy home. The father could never cut enough wood to sell in order to buy all the things his wife wanted. The children felt so sorry for their father because he always tried to be nice to them. That night, while the children were asleep, Now listen, husband, we have to do something to cut down on our expenses. We're going to starve if we don't do something right away. Here's what you're going to do. Take the children deep into the forest and leave them there. That way we'll have enough to eat. Leave my children? How can you say that? Never, never, never. Although I won't be able to feed them if they stay here. Exactly, you fool. Now listen to me. Hmm? Do as I say! Oh, 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 yes, yes. Leaving them in the forest will be the best thing for them. The children had been awakened by the screaming and had heard the stepmother's plan. <laughs> Don't cry, Gretel. I'll think of something. Hansel took a walk in the night air to try to think of a solution. He noticed that the moonlight shining on the pebbles in the forest made them sparkle like diamonds. He had an idea. That's it. The next morning, the children were told that they were to come along into the forest to help gather wood. But they knew the real reason. this? What's Hansel doing? What? He's dropping pebbles behind him as he walks. How strange. Now don't stray from the fire, children. We'll be right back. Oh, my poor Hansel. Gretel. The evil stepmother and her reluctant husband left the children and headed for home. Hours passed and soon the exhausted children fell asleep by the fire. The children were awakened by the hooting of an owl and began to scream for help. Help! Help us! Father! Poor children. They screamed and screamed, but there was no one around to hear them. Then Gretel began to cry. Don't cry, Gretel. I'll get us back home. 
when the moon was at its fullest and brightest, there appeared a trail of diamonds sparkling along the ground. They were pebbles reflecting the moonlight. The pebbles that Hansel had dropped behind him on the journey from home. Clever Hansel knew that by the light of the moon, he could follow the sparkling trail back to their doorstep. Father! Oh, children! Oh, you're safe! Oh, Hansel, Gretel, you're safe, you're safe! That night, Hansel had tried to collect more pebbles, but his stepmother had locked the bedroom door. So Hansel lay awake all night, worrying about tomorrow. And soon it was morning. At breakfast, the children were told that they once again would have to go into the forest to help gather wood. Hansel watched his stepmother carefully. And when she wasn't looking, he slipped some bread into his pocket. I wonder why. Poor Hansel and Gretel, how will they ever find their way back? The bread. Why, Hansel was leaving a trail of breadcrumbs. Oh, dear. The birds are eating the bread. There'll be no trail left at all. Hansel and Gretel will never find their way back home. Those poor children, what will become of them? When their father and stepmother left, Hansel and Gretel tried to find their way back home. The children were frightened by the creatures of the night but they knew they must keep searching for the way home. They bravely pushed onward, walking and walking. They were so exhausted. Gretel was so weak that Hansel had to carry her on his back. And soon Hansel became just as tired, and they had to rest in the hollowed-out trunk of a tree where they slept soundly through the night. The next morning, Hansel and Gretel continued their search for the path home. They were so tired and so hungry. But then... Huh? Suddenly, they saw a beautiful candy house. Wow, it's candy! They raced Come on, to the house. let's go! Wow, real milk chocolate! Yes, and gingerbread, too! The children began to nibble on the house. Nibbling at my little house. Oh, I have two little hungry visitors. Please come in, won't you? Wow, this is the most delicious house I've ever seen. So you like it, hmm? You may eat all you want. I love healthy little children. What would you like to eat first? Some candy? Some cake? Hmm? What's this? By the light of her lantern, the old lady cast a frightening shadow on the wall. Something wrong? Oh, no. A witch. The candy. The cake. The house. children. Gretel slaved while Hansel was being fattened up. Come on, eat your dinner. It's good for you. It'll put some meat on you. Come on, eat up. Hansel, you should be nice and plump by now. But I don't feel fatter. But you must have gained weight. No, I think I'm losing it. Hansel had noticed that the witch had very poor eyesight. My eyes are too weak to trust. Let me feel your finger. Clever Hansel took an old chicken bone from his pocket and presented it as his finger. Ha! Huh. I can feel his bones. He's certainly not ready for cooking. The old witch soon tired of trying to fatten Hansel. She just couldn't wait any longer. Oh, is that boy skinny? But I'll bet he'll be a tasty little morsel. <laughs> oh, dear Hansel, my poor, poor brother. Gretel was forced to build a fire. Hurry, Gretel. The fire seems to be coming along very nicely. 
Now see if the oven's at the proper temperature. How? How? What's wrong with you, girl? Haven't you ever done any baking? I haven't. Watch. You stick your head in like this. Really? Oof. Ah! Help me! Help! While the witch was burning in her oven, the evil stepmother was busy cooking. Until... Saved us. We're safe now. <laughs> Hansel and Gretel were free, and they both wished with all their might that they could be at home with their father. When Hansel, it was their Gretel. father. He had been searching for days, trying to find his children. He had realized that he had made a terrible mistake. Oh, it's father! My children, please forgive me. I'll never leave you again. Father! Father! They began their long journey home. As they walked, the children told of their adventure with the evil witch. Their father listened intently and promised that from then on, he would always protect them. And that he had banished his evil wife from the house forever. Now nothing could stand in the way of the family's <laughs> happiness. And when they reached home, a joyous celebration marked the beginning of their everlasting happiness. <laughs> Don Quixote, the classic story of old Spain. Many, many years ago, in 16th century Spain, in an area known as La Mancha, there lay a quiet little village. And in the village, there was a large estate that belonged to a middle-aged gentleman named Alonzo Quijano. Instead of taking care of his estate, like most other gentlemen at the time, Alonzo Quijano preferred to read books about chivalry, about knights in shining armor. And the more he read, the more he envied the knights of old. They led such exciting lives. He imagined that he was a brave knight on a fast steed riding through the land, protecting maidens in distress and slaying dragons and monsters. Sancho! Yes, sir, may I help you? Sancho, I will become a brave knight and you my squire. We will ride through the land and uphold justice for all. He was very serious. He changed his name to Don Quixote and wore his great-grandfather's armor. He then mounted a common plow horse and named it Rosinante. And along with his faithful squire, he was ready for his first adventure as a knight. The next morning, as the sun was shining brightly over the farmlands of the village, there suddenly appeared a knight in shining armor and a squire riding through the countryside. Everyone stopped their work to have a look at this strange sight. They just couldn't believe their eyes. Sancho, there is much to do. We must push on. The work of a brave knight is never done. Don Quixote and Sancho had reached the end of their first day without incident. But Don Quixote dreamed of the adventures to come as they rode into the night. The people of the village thought that Don Quixote's behavior was very peculiar. Don Quixote and Sancho continued their ride through the countryside, when suddenly... Huh? Oh! What a lovely girl! Beautiful maiden, let me introduce myself. I am Don Quixote. Hello, I'm Aldanza. Why are you dressed so strangely? Strangely? Huh? Uh, 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 uh. Why, I am the brave knight of La Mancha. Oh, so you're the man I've been hearing about. Is there some kind of unrest in the land that has caused you to become a knight? Unrest? Why, there is much injustice. Yes. 
Aldanza gave him a rose. She realized that he was quite harmless. Our brave knight is a real gentleman. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Our heroes were soon on their way. Don Quixote was overjoyed at finding a beautiful maiden to protect. As they said farewell, he decided to rename her Dulcinea. The next morning, Don Quixote and Sancho were sleeping soundly beneath a large tree when suddenly... Huh? Ah, an enemy army approaching. Come, Sancho. Huh? Master, master. As the dust cleared, Don Quixote and Sancho could see two groups of animals galloping to the center of the field. The enemy attacked! Don Quixote charged. But wait, they're only sheep. Not to Don Quixote. He imagined an enemy army, and he went into action. Where are you? Show yourselves! Come out and fight like men, you sniveling cowards! Come on! Huh? huh? I'll run you through, you evildoers! All of you, let's go! Come on! Don Quixote has fallen from his horse. Is he all right? Huh? Come on, keep coming! I'll take you all on, you scoundrels! Don't run! Aha! Take that! Let's go! I'll take you! Come on! There was a terrible storm that night, but our brave hero and his loyal servant pushed onward. Or at least they tried to. The winds were blowing so hard that every time they moved forward, they were blown back. They had a hard time getting anywhere. They struggled and struggled to fight the wind. It was a difficult battle. Finally, Sancho had to push his master's horse to get them moving forward. Don Quixote was determined to find adventure, and Sancho faithfully helped him in any way he could. They came upon some windmills that were spinning rapidly in the winds of the storm. Don Quixote and Sancho continued to struggle against the elements. The windmills illuminated by the lightning looked mysterious. And with Don Quixote's imagination, these huge spinning mechanical structures could appear to be almost anything. Sancho, my lance! Sancho couldn't understand why Don Quixote wanted his lance, but being the faithful companion that he was, he brought his master the weapon. He looked at his master and then for the enemy. But he saw no one, just the windmill standing tall against the flashing lightning and crackling thunder. But the grimly determined Don Quixote, focusing on the pinwheel-like effect of the nearest windmill, used his great imagination to slowly turn it into a frightening vision. The vision grew and grew until it was clearly a giant monster standing directly in his path. Don Quixote studied the enemy. And as he looked closely at the monster, it raised its hand, and in it he saw... Dulcinea! Help! Help me! Help! I'll oh, save help you! Me. <laughs> Quixote bravely charged the windmill. But to him, that windmill was the giant monster who had captured his love, Dulcinea. Unhand her! Help! 
I'm coming! Fear not! Oh, please! Evil creature, you shall feel my lance! Don Quixote. He had speared the sail of the windmill, and it had hurled him into the air. And so our brave knight had come to the end of another imaginary adventure. The next day, the sails of the windmills turned peacefully from a cool, steady breeze. The sky was clear, and the air was fresh and clean from the fallen rain. It was a fine day, but not for our friends. Our brave knight had suffered his first defeat, and loyal Sancho led his injured master home to nurse his wounds. Don Quixote believed that some kind of evil magic had turned that giant into a windmill. Oh! Don Quixote was weary. What happened? Huh? Oh, my Dulcinea! I'm so glad you're safe! I would fight all the giants in the land for you. Oh, Don Quixote, you'll never see the world as others do. When the townspeople laughed, Don Quixote was unconcerned. He returned to his home with Sancho and with the lovely Dulcinea by his side. He enjoyed reading to her and the local children from his book of chivalry. Hmm. But what's this? And There's so something the wrong. Knight. Don Quixote seems shocked at what he's reading. What could be upsetting him so? Sancho! Huh? Bring my armor and prepare my mount. There is too much injustice in the land for us to rest. Onward we'll march, fighting for justice uh... forever! <sighs> and so, once again, our brave knight donned his armor and, along with his faithful squire, was ready for battle. They galloped away, determined to right the wrongs of the land. Don Quixote would not let anything stop him from fulfilling his dream of becoming a brave knight. The lesson to be learned from the unusual behavior of our brave knight is one of perseverance. And that simply means when you really want to do something very badly, never ever give up, no matter how difficult things may seem. Because if you truly believe in your dream, you can make it come true. Norway is one of the world's northernmost countries, and its freezing winters seem to go on forever. The north wind blows continuously, covering the forests and the lakes with a blanket of frost and snow. Long ago, a very poor woman lived alone with her son deep in the Norwegian snow forest. He was a good boy, and when his mother came down with a cold, he did as much as he could to help. There, this should help you get your strength back. Careful, it's a little hot, mother. And every morning, the son would go out to the barn to get a bowl full of grain so that he could make bread. You see, they were so poor that bread was about all they had to eat until springtime. In an instant, that cantankerous old north wind blew all of the wheat out of the sun's bowl and scattered it on the snow. Well, there was nothing he could do but go back for another bowl full. But no matter how angry he got, it wouldn't bring that precious wheat back. They were so poor that all the food they had left to take them through till spring was that one sack of wheat. He couldn't afford to lose any more. This time, for sure, he just had to make it safely from the barn to the house. Okay, that's 
That's it, you old windbag. Norway is the home of the ancient Vikings, and some of that warrior's blood must have still flowed. That boy, he knew no fear and marched straight for the cave where it is said the north wind lives. So this is where the North Wind lives. My, how brave. He's marching right into that cave. Brr. Hey, come out. I dare you. Ah. Hey, who's there? All of a sudden, the wind that seemed to never stop blowing stopped. North Wind, I came a long way to see you. Now you let me in. What do you say? You came all the way just to see me? That's right. And with that, the brave little Viking marched right into the cave. And then... Hello. Yay! This was the first time anyone had ever come to visit him. And the North Wind was delighted. Please sit down, won't you? I didn't come to visit. Now quit teasing. But I just want to be friends with you. Why are we so mean? You blew away all of our wheat. Now we can make no bread. Your wheat? I've come to get our wheat back. If we don't, we'll have nothing to eat until spring. Come on now, give it back. The North Wind was really a kind-hearted old gentleman. And when he heard this... <sighs> I'm sorry, I don't have any grain. But won't you take this, please? That's no ordinary tablecloth. It is magic. And whenever you get hungry, all you have to do is think of what you'd like, and it will produce it. A magic tablecloth? Golly, thanks. The little Viking was delighted with his gift and quickly set out for home to show his mother. But night was already falling. So he decided to stop at a roadside inn to spend the night. A mean-looking old lady answers his knock. If you want to stay here, you'll have to pay in advance. But the landlady of that inn was known to be the stingiest and meanest lady in the land. Huh. All this will get you is a storeroom. No food. Understand? The little Viking had been marching all day, so as soon as he got to his room, he decided to give the magic tablecloth a try. Tablecloth, tablecloth. Spread me a smorgasbord of banquet fit for Vikings. What? It was just like a dream for the boy. He who had never had a full stomach in his life. Uh oh. The stingy landlady has seen the whole thing. Later that night. Oh, what a mean old lady. She replaced the North Wind's magic tablecloth with her own ordinary one. The next day, the little Viking returned home just as fast as he could so he could show his mother the North Wind's present. Tablecloth, tablecloth, spread us a smorgasbord, a banquet fit for a Viking. What? What's happened? Come on, please, come on, just a little, please. But, of course, it was not to be. The boy grew angrier and angrier and then set off once more to have it out with the North Wind. That's funny. That shouldn't be. Okay, tell you what I'll do. Take this sheep. Whenever you need any money, all you have to do is ask it. <sighs> But that day, too, it was growing late, so the little Viking decided once more to stay at the inn. Huh. That'll be cash in advance. Okay, just a second. Sheep, sheep. Money for our sleep. Well, 
that be enough? And do you know what that stingy old landlady did that night? That's right, you guessed it. She replaced the magic sheep with one of her own. <laughs> ah! You can't trick me again. Your tablecloth should sleep only worked once, you old windbag. That shouldn't be at all. I don't need any more presents. Just give me back our grain. That's impossible. I don't have any wheat. All I have to give you is... Oh. This is a magic stick. All you have to do is say, Go, stick, go! And it will start smacking your enemy until you tell it to stop. The little Viking had no choice, so he took the stick and started home. And once more, his path led past that inn. Yoo-hoo! Aren't you going to stay here tonight, dearie? I'd like to, but I don't have any money. But what's that stick you're carrying? I'll bet it has magic powers like your tablecloth and your sheep. And so it was to be that he would spend another night at the inn. She's only nice to me she thinks I have something magic. Why was that stingy old lady being so nice to him? He finally began to realize that both the tablecloth and the sheep had lost their powers after he'd used them at the inn. <laughs> Good. He's sleeping soundly. Just sleep tight, my pretty. <laughs> Now, the magic stick is mine! <laughs> Hold right there, I wasn't sleeping! Go, stick, go! Go get her! Ouch! Oh, ouch! Help me! Help me! Okay! Okay! Ouch! I'll give you back your old tablecloth and your sheep. Just call off that stick. Do you promise? Yes. Oh, yes, I promise. Just take off that stick. Okay, stick, that's enough. And so the little Viking had his magic presence back at last. And the little Viking and his mother had all they could eat, and enough money to build a warm house, stout enough to withstand even the north wind's most furious blasts. The Pied Piper, from Germany. Long ago, in the Middle Ages of Europe, long before television or even radio, traveling minstrels, that is, musicians and singers, roamed the land going from town to town to entertain the people. This story is about one of the most famous minstrels of all, the Pied Piper. One day, as he was tootling on his pipe and marching through the countryside, he came across a town by the name of Hamlin. So he decided to pay the town a visit to see if he could make some money playing for the people there. But everyone in Hamlin seemed to be too busy to stop and listen to his fine playing. Oh, well, maybe he'd have better luck on the edge of town where things were a bit quieter. Sure enough, the farmers and craftsmen were enchanted by his music and, in no time at all, a line had formed and they were all marching and dancing merrily, following the piper through the streets. But when he got back to the town, he found that everyone had disappeared. What's this? 
It looks like the only ones left in the town were the rats. And they didn't seem to be afraid of anything. They were all over the place. Do something to get rid of the rats. They're everywhere. Rats. They've broken into my house and eaten all of my family's food. You've got to do something and do it fast. That's now, right. citizens, please do don't something. worry. I know that this rat problem looks pretty bad, but I promise you that I will rid this town of the pest forever. I am going to have our brave soldiers clear them out of this town immediately. And so the mayor ordered the army to stand guard at every door to keep the rats away. But the rats didn't seem very worried. reported that the army had failed. The rats had taken over every home and store in the city. And now they were even moving into the mayor's office. Oh, the mayor was at a loss. It seemed there was no way to rid Hamlin of its rats. The mayor asked for volunteers and ideas, but no one would step forward. Your Honor, the Pied Piper at your service. I think I can be of help. You? Why, you're a mere piper. How can you succeed where the soldiers have failed, huh? I can play a tune that is sure to hypnotize them and make them follow me out of town. Excellent! Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, idea. great yeah. idea. Yeah. Marvelous. Yeah. Do yeah. it. Yeah. Let him do it. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's oh, an excellent yeah. idea, my son. Excellent. On behalf of all the townspeople, I want to wish you luck and assure you that you will be handsomely rewarded if you succeed in ridding this town of rats. And so it was that the Pied Piper was commissioned by the mayor of Hamlin to rid his town of all its rats. Thank you, Your Honor. Good day, gentlemen. Do you really think he can do it? <laughs> Even if he does, you, see, you are going to the people of Hamlin money. had become you? very selfish and spoiled. And they were especially unkind to strangers. Even to those who lent them a helping hand, like the Pied Piper. And so they asked the mayor to find some way to cheat him out of his reward. Listen, folks. It's the Piper, and it's just as he promised. The rats are all following him out of town. Huh? There were hundreds, no, thousands, no, millions of rats, all entranced by the Piper's playing. Inside the town, there was a small river, and it was the Piper's plan to lead them all into the river to drown. When they reached the banks of the river, the Piper stopped to make sure that all of the rats had been led away from the city. Rats? 
Forward! And as the piper played, the rats followed one another right over the bank and into the river. Until every last one of them was gone. I'm happy to report that the rats are gone, just as I promised. My boy, we're happy with your work. Very happy indeed. You've done an excellent job and have our thanks. If you're ever this way again, feel free to drop by. Huh? The Pied Piper was speechless. Surely the mayor had not forgotten his promise. But, but Your Honor, you promised that I would be handsomely rewarded for my work. I have done what I said I would. Surely you will keep, keep your word. Keep my word, you want Grateful vagabond thinks his reward enough. Get out! And, and stay out! I'll teach these people to keep their word. And so, early the next morning, the piper's hypnotic music was heard once more in the city of Hamlin. Just like the rats, all the children of the town were enchanted by the piper's merry music, and they all began to follow him as he marched through the town. They marched out of Hamlin and down the path away from the town, singing merrily all the way. Wait for me! Wait for me! Slow down! Slow down! Hey! Hey! The Pied Piper left one boy behind to tell the wicked people of Hamlin what had happened. He promised to keep their children from them until they had all learned their lesson, never to give their word or promise unless they meant to keep it, because a person is only as good as his word. The Spirit in the Bottle by the Brothers Grimm Many millions of years ago, long before animals or even plants had appeared on the earth. The world was inhabited by a band of evil spirits who roamed the land and a choir of angels high above in the heavens. spirits. I'd like to throw them all in jail. Something must be done. 
All those in favor of rounding up the evil spirits, say aye. Aye! aye. In no time at all, the angels had rounded up every last spirit. But now the problem was where to keep all of them. The angels just couldn't keep them locked up in chains like that. That would be too cruel. That's right. The angels shrank all of those evil spirits and flunk them into all the bottles, barrels, and jugs they could find. And when the evil spirits had all been safely hidden away, the angels scattered those bottles and things all over the world. That was so long ago that even the angels have forgotten where they scattered all those evil spirits. So be careful. One could be in your neighborhood right now. I wonder what's inside. <coughs> Not so very long ago, a very poor woodcutter lived alone in a dark forest. The woodcutter worked from very early every day to very late every night, doing his best to make enough money so that he could put some savings aside. The savings were a part of the woodcutter's dream. He wanted very much for his only son to become a doctor. But that was quite expensive, and it cost the woodcutter every spare penny he could make. But then, one day... Father, I'm home. Huh? What are you doing home in the middle of the week? It's not a school holiday, is it? Huh? No, it's not a holiday. I flunked out, that's all. Flunked out? Oh. Looks like I won't be becoming a doctor after all. It's good to be home. But that means all that money I worked so hard to save has all gone for nothing. Don't take it so hard, Father. Maybe I just wasn't meant to become a doctor after all. Don't worry, I'll be all right. Maybe I'll just stay here and become a woodcutter like you. Nothing wrong with that, is there? The son was too young to understand how disappointed his father was. Woodcutting was backbreaking work. He didn't want that for his son. He wanted him to become a great doctor, respected by one and all. Hey, father, wait for me! If I'm to become a good woodcutter like you, I'd better start to learn right now. Let me try it, okay? I don't think you know what you're getting into, son. Why, you've never had to lift anything so heavy as a sack of flour in your whole life. I don't think you're ready for this. Why don't you try looking for a city job? Don't worry about me, father. I know this won't be easy at first, but I'm not as soft as you think. Just give me a chance to help you, okay? Well, the father was right. Woodcutting was a lot harder than it sounded. <laughs> as a woodcutter. Not enough brains for school or a strong enough back for work. Don't worry about me. If it wasn't meant to be, it wasn't meant to be. I'll find something to do. Maybe I could become a juggler in the circus. Juggler in the circus? If you'd just spent a little more time on your books, you could have been a doctor, you lazy good-for-nothing. Have you ever seen such a happy-go-lucky boy? He truly believed that if he just waited long enough, he was sure to find his true destiny. like one of those evil spirit bottles. Hey, what's the matter with you? Can't you see I'm stuck in here? Of 
course, the woodcutter's son had never heard the story of the angels and the evil spirits, so he saw no reason not to let it out. Oh, no. Oh. I haven't been able to stretch out for a thousand years. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. You gave me such a start that I fell down and bumped my knee. Who are you anyway? Why, I'm one of the most powerful evil spirits in the universe. Sure want to thank you for getting me out. I've got quite a treat for you, you know. Really? W what is it? It's very special. I'm going to eat you for breakfast. What kind of treat is that? Remember, I'm the one that got you out of the bottle. You have bottle. to remember that I'm an evil spirit. You didn't expect me to be nice to you, did you? I did that. I couldn't call myself evil. It's a great honor to be eaten by someone as powerful as me. Help! Let me out of here! That boy could think fast when he had to. He had a plan. What's the matter with you? You're not being very polite, you know. Huh? I know, I know, but I just wanted to be sure you're a real evil spirit. What? If you can just prove to me that you're a real evil spirit. Well, just what kind of proof would it take? To tell you the truth, there was so much smoke and fog, I couldn't tell if you really came out of that bottle. If you were to do it one more time... You call that proof? That's no problem at all for an evil spirit like me. Here, hold on to this and I'll be right back. Whoa! Okay, get a load of this! Okay, that should prove it! Ouch! Hey! What's going on here? If I let you out of there, you'll eat me for breakfast. You had your chance, but I outsmarted you. I guess you'll just have to get used to life in the bottle again. If you let me out, I'll give you a real treat. And this time I promise. Okay, but this time I want it before you get out of the bottle. You won't trick me again. Hmm. Well, okay. I'll give you my walking stick. This old thing? What in the world would I do with a walking stick this big? But that's not just a walking stick. See that button on the side? All you have to do is push it and the stick will cure any sickness in the world. It really will. I promise. But this is much too big for me to carry around. How about something smaller? Do I look like Santa Claus or something? Well, if you'd rather stay in the bottle... Okay, you win. Try turning that button to the right. Like this? It was just as the evil spirit promised. So the woodcutter's son decided to test the stick's healing powers on his own bruised knee. Well, it may be an evil spirit, but as long as he's kept in that bottle, he knows enough to tell the truth. There! Now let me out like you promised, okay? But if I let you out, you'll just go back to your evil ways again now, won't you? Of course! What else is an evil spirit to do? I've had a thousand years to think of a hundred new dirty tricks! Looks like you'll have to stay in the bottle. What? But you promised! Hmm. I really didn't mean to lie, but at least now you know how it feels. I can't very well let you out of there just so you can start playing dirty tricks. How can I? Bye. Wait a minute! Don't leave me here! You promised! <laughs> Thanks to the evil spirit's walking stick, the woodcutter's son became a very great doctor. There wasn't a single sickness or disease in the world he couldn't cure. His waiting room was busy from morning till night, and the son soon became rich enough to pay his father back. Okay, let me see that foot. There you go. Yippee, I'm cured, yippee! <laughs> next, show in the next patient. That is the story of the spirit in a bottle. But just remember, there may be one of those evil spirit bottles still lying around in your own neighborhood. So be very careful in opening and playing with any strange bottles or cans you might find. An evil spirit might jump out.
Why Dogs and Cats Always Fight, a folk tale from China. Once upon a time, on a farm deep in the countryside of China, there lived a very poor old man and his wife. They had no children of their own, so they kept a dog and a cat and treated them as if they were their own children. We should be home before dark. Every morning, the dog and the cat would help the old man carry his things to the field. The dog carried the radish basket, and the cat was supposed to carry their lunch. But he usually found some way to trick the dog into carrying that, too. The cat and the dog spent the day playing but they were always careful not to get in their owner's way as he worked. Hey, it's a garter snake. Do you think we can eat it? It looks sick. Uh, I better tell Gramps. saw the poor garter snake, he decided to take it home and ask his wife what to do. The kind farmer and his wife nursed the garter snake for two weeks, and eventually it was strong enough to take care of itself again. You've been most kind to help me. In thanks, I'd like to leave my tail with you. Keep it in a little box, and any time you run short of money, just take it out and shake it. Hmm. Whatever can he mean? Just as the garter snake had promised, golden coins fell from its tail and the farmer and his wife were at last able to live a life of ease. But then one day, a traveling merchant stopped to ask if he could spend the night. Of course, the kind farmer could not refuse a weary traveler's request, so he agreed and even offered him something to eat. Later that night, when everyone was asleep... The visitor silently began to search the house, for he was really a thief disguised as a merchant. He had heard about the farmer's good fortune and the stories about the magic snake's tail, and he wanted it for himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh! The next morning, the farmer and his wife awoke to find their home ransacked and the magic snake's tail missing. Never had they been so sad. Hey, we better do something about this. We can't let that thief get away with this. Meow. But how will we ever find him now? I don't know. But just look how sad Grandma and Gramps are. We've got to at least try. <gasps> well, okay. Meow. <coughs> Don't worry, Gramps. I'll find that thief and get that tail back for you. There, there. That's a good kitty. I knew I could count on you. And so the faithful dog and the mischievous cat began to search the land for the missing snake's tail. But after several days, there was still no sign of the thief. The cat and the dog hadn't had anything to eat. And when they tried to find food, they were rudely Stop. chased away. Stay out of our kitchen. Let's go home. But Gramps will be so disappointed if we return without the tail. The cat and the dog asked the crow if he'd heard of anyone suddenly rich in the area. And sure enough, the crow told them of a very rich and strange man in a nearby village. Oh! What's the matter with you? All we have to do is swim across and we'll be right next to the thief's home. 
Uh, I know, but, but you know cats are afraid of water. I can't swim. All right, hop on and I'll carry you across. Come on. Oh, oh. my nose. Oh, hey, hey, sit still, oh, will you? Oh, hey, come oh, on. Let go. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> At last, they had found the thief's house. This must be it, but I wonder what's going on. Come on. It looked like everyone from the town was gathering there. Hey, what's the matter with you? There's no cats or dogs allowed at a wedding. Now scram! That's right. Thanks to the magic snake's tail, the thief was now the richest man in the land, and the mayor had agreed to let him marry his daughter. Well, it looks like you're the only one with a chance to get in. You'll have to try it without me, okay? All right. I should be able to get over the wall if you give me a boost. Good luck. I'll be waiting for you on the edge of town, okay? Sure, this won't take long. Meow. The cat reasoned that the thief would keep the magic snake's tail close to him, so it must be somewhere in the bedroom. But it was such a large place that the cat had no luck at all, so he searched all over. Oh, the cat's favorite food. The cat hadn't had a bite to eat all day, and the mouse looked delicious. Wait, wait. If you just spare me, I'll do anything you ask. I promise, please. Hmm. Well, maybe I can let you go if you know where the master of this house has hidden the magic snake's tail. Well? Well? I know, I know. Come on, I'll get it for you. Oh. Is this it? lost the guards and the magic snake's tail was once again safe. Oh no, do we really have to cross the river again? Someone brave enough to take back that box must be brave enough to cross a little river. That's right. I did do a pretty good job of it, didn't I? Okay, let's go. And so once more, the cat hopped up on the dog's back as he bravely swam across the river. But already the cat was thinking about all the presents the old farmer would give him when he returned the magic tail. Hmm? Wow! Oh, no. The cat still hadn't eaten. And when he saw all those fish, he forgot about the little box in his mouth. Oh, no, he'd better hurry or they'll lose it forever. That little dog dove and swam like an Olympic swimmer. My, how brave. Okay, once more. I wonder what that cat is doing while all of this is going on. Oh, no. At last, the dog found the magic tail. But he was so tuckered out from all that swimming, he couldn't go a step further and <laughs> fell fast asleep. Oh, dear, that selfish cat has taken the box, and I'll bet he plans to collect all the rewards for himself. How nasty. When the cat returned alone with the magic snake's tail, the old couple were overjoyed, and they fixed it a meal of all its favorite foods. But that selfish cat didn't have one kind word to say to the dog. Meow. There, there. That's a good kitty. Woof, 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 woof. 
Where have you been? You ran off and left the poor cat to find the magic tail all by itself. What's the matter with you? I've never been so disappointed. From now on, you'll have to sleep outside. There's no room for a lazy dog like you around here. Oh, that's not fair now, is it? Well, from that day on, the dog has never been able to forgive the cat for its selfishness. I'm sure you've all seen dogs chasing after cats, haven't you? Well, this story tells us one of the reasons why. The, fe the Pheasant and the Gong, a legend from the East Asian country of Korea. Many years ago, there lived a woodcutter. He was a very kind man who cared about the forest and especially all the animals who lived in it. One day when he was chopping down a tree, Take a look. <gasps> a snake! Stop! Stop! The woodcutter couldn't just stand there and let the snake take the pheasant's eggs. Oh. Are you okay, little mother? I hope your babies are all right. The mother pheasant thanked the kind woodcutter with all her heart. Soon all the eggs had hatched and the mother pheasant had four happy but hungry mouths to feed. The woodcutter dropped by every day to share his lunch with the fast-growing pheasants. And in no time at all, they had grown big and strong enough to fly off with their mother. Several years later, the woodcutter set out on a long journey through country he had never visited before. Along the way, he passed a temple with a large gong. And he stopped for a minute to say a little prayer to speed his trip, and then set out once more. I'm so tired. I don't know if I can go on without a rest. I hope that I can find some shelter for the night. I need some place to sleep. Huh? It looks like a light shining. Why, what's that? Ooh. What's a beautiful house like this doing out here in the middle of the forest? Hello? Hello? Is anyone home? Is anyone there? Hello? 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 Please come in, weary traveler. You are most welcome to stop here and rest a while. He couldn't believe his eyes or ears. What a beautiful and sweet young girl. But the woodcutter could not understand why a young girl like that would be living all alone in such an isolated and lonely place. She had fixed him a delicious meal of fish and vegetables and rice. Mm. But there was something strange about this girl, something strangely familiar. Oh, I forgot where I was.
just for a moment. You startled me. Please. Thank you very much. You know, you've been really kind to let me stay here like this. The woodcutter was very grateful, yet he couldn't help feeling that something was very strange about that girl. Did you know that this house has been haunted? What? There is an evil spirit in the room with us right now. It has waited many years for a night just like tonight. Why, the woodcutter was too surprised to reply. What was she talking about? What spirits? He looked all over. Where were they? How strange. Woodcutter, I have been waiting all these years for you. <laughs> trap just as I planned, Woodcutter. Surely you remember me now, the spirit of the snake. <laughs> oh my, the evil snake spirit had tricked the Woodcutter and she was not going to let him go. I've been planning my revenge ever since that day. Surely you remember the day you killed a snake trying to rob a pheasant's nest? Did you think that was just an ordinary snake? Well, I am the ghost of that snake you killed. Oh, oh snake spirit, have mercy, have mercy. I didn't mean to hurt you. I only wanted to protect the young pheasants. I wanted them to have a happy life. Oh, spare me, please. Woodcutter pleaded and pleaded, but the evil snake spirit was set on having her revenge. But then, the woodcutter began to weep and the snake spirit started to feel sorry for him. She decided to give him a chance to save himself. Woodcutter, your tears have touched me. I will give you one chance to save yourself. Really? If the gong in the temple at the edge of the dark forest should ring before the sun rises, I will set you free. No harm will come uh -huh. to you. But, Woodcutter, you must remain here with me until the gong rings. I will not let you out of my sight for an instant. <gasps> the Woodcutter had not seen another soul in the forest. And who would ring the gong in the middle of the night anyway? It really wasn't a very fair chance after all, was it? Woodcutter, the time will pass quickly. You had better think of a way to make the gong ring. You haven't much time. The woodcutter bowed his head. It was hopeless. <laughs> the old temple stood silently in the moonlight. There wasn't a person in sight. There was no one to ring the gong for the woodcutter. Soon it will be dawn. <laughs> Your time is quickly running out, Woodcutter. <laughs> In a few more minutes. <laughs> Just as the snake spirit was about to grab the poor Woodcutter... What? How could this happen? There's no one else around for miles. But the woodcutter was just as surprised as the snake spirit. He didn't know who had rung the gong, but he was very happy. The gong rang. The gong really rang. I'm saved. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Woodcutter, you have succeeded in doing what I asked. I will keep my word. You have your freedom. And I shall never bother you again. A promise is a promise. Suddenly, the snake spirit was gone, along with the beautiful house, leaving the woodcutter sitting on a tree trunk in the middle of the forest. And so the woodcutter headed home. He walked until he came to the old temple. He stopped in front of it to give his thanks. And then he decided to have a look at the gong that had saved him so mysteriously. Oh! 
The pheasant, the pheasant rang the gong. Yes, the pheasant had rung the gong. She knew the kind woodcutter was in danger, so she flew into the gong to help a friend who had helped her. Oh, thank you. Thank you. The woodcutter was very sad about his good friend and very touched by what she had done to save him. He would never forget her. Goodbye, good friend. Suddenly, the heavens opened. And the good mother pheasant was transformed into a radiant spirit. Because of her kindness and loyalty, she was guided by a beautiful beam of light and accepted into the heavens. There, she would remain happy and safe forever and ever. Stable, the country mouse and the city mouse. Once upon a time, long, long ago, there lived a happy and contented young field mouse deep in the countryside of Greece. There was food aplenty, and the field mouse's life was about as carefree as one could be. He spent most afternoons curled up in the shade of a flower without a worry in the world. One day, the field mouse had a visitor. Hey there, field mouse, it's me. I've come for a visit. Hi. It was his friend, the city mouse, come to pay him a visit after many years. That night, the country mouse did everything he could to make the city mouse comfortable. He prepared a marvelous dinner of natural foods from the surrounding fields. But the city mouse seemed a little confused and out of place. Um, 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 um. Is something the matter? Um, it's just that I'm a little confused. Certainly you don't expect me to eat things like corn on the cob, lettuce, nuts, and berries, do you? Huh? Why, I'm used to eating exotic cheeses, jellies, and sausages from all over the world. Cheese, what's that? What? You must be kidding. Don't tell me you've never even tasted cheese. Who ever heard of a mouse that didn't eat cheese? It's unbelievable. He then began to tell his friend all about life in the big city. Why, a city mouse would never be caught living in a hole like this. We live in a regular house. When it rains, the roof doesn't leak, and during the winter, we stay as warm as toast. And the food, why, you wouldn't believe the variety. There's salami, pastrami, and pork chops, and ham. And I'll bet you never even The city had a mouse went on and on late into the night. With coconut and almonds sprinkled on a top. And at night, we can go to a hundred different places to listen to music. And if we're lucky, we might even get to dance with a cute little thing that had such a whiskers to twitching. Once I'd like to try living in a warm, dry house, nibbling Swiss cheese and dancing the night away. Maybe my life is a little too dull. Yes, sir. You only live once. And like I say, you've got to make the most of it. Why, you're wasting your life out there in those fields. With nothing to do but go to bed early, you've made the right choice. I think you're going to love the city. Well, you may be right. At least I've got to see for myself. And so it was that the little field mouse from the country set off on his great adventure to the city down the river. Let's go! Right behind you! <laughs> the country mouse was overwhelmed by all of the new sights, sounds, and smells of the big city. Excited. I'm all right. It was you jumping around like you had a fish in your pocket. Well, just be more alert. You could have gotten a smash flat as a pancake. <laughs> yeah! Run for your life! 
Hey, hey, are you crazy? Let's get out of here. <laughs> little field mouse didn't mean to scare anyone. He was just trying to get away from that barking dog. So he ran and he ran, not knowing which way to turn. Oh, oh my goodness! Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. No time to take a nap. Come on. Huh? Oh, boy, am I glad to see you. Well, that was quite an introduction to city life. That country mouse had never run so fast in his entire life. What are you talking about? That was nothing. Don't worry. You'll soon get used to things around here. Just be a little more careful, huh? And so the city mouse led his country cousin along the underground sewer until he had reached his home. Well, there it is. What do you think? Wow! The country mouse thought it was the most beautiful house he had ever seen. And the city mouse had his own little apartment up in the attic. Well, home sweet home. Wow wee! Well, if you think this is nice, wait till you check out the food! Mm -mm, something sure smells good. Wow, take a look at this. Oh wee! I've never seen so much food in one place. Sure does look good. It's just about dinner time. What'd you say we drop down and help ourselves? All righty. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Two, it was the city one, mouse's two, habit one, to do exercises two, one, before two, every one, meal. Two, one, the country two, mouse had one, never two, seen anything one, like it. Gotta stay in training for the big cat. Did you say cat? What cat? Ah, nothing to worry about. He lives downstairs. All the city mouse had to do was mention the word cat, and the country mouse joined right in with the exercises. He had enough trouble running away from the dog. If he expected to stay clear of the cat, he'd better get into shape. they reached the food. See? What did I tell you? Go ahead and help yourself.
That was really close, wasn't it? I don't know, but I think I've had enough of your city life. Don't be hasty. Things like this happen all the time. You'll get used to it. Well, I don't know. I just don't think I fit in here. Hey, where are you going? You're not leaving already, are you? I'm going back to the country. I've seen all I want to see of city life. We may not live in big, warm houses and have fancy things to eat, but at least we can find peace and quiet. Hey, wait! You can't leave now! I've already made plans for us to go out dancing! Hey, wait! Huh? The country mouse had had enough of the big city's excitement, and he couldn't wait to get back to a snug little burrow beneath the oak tree. It may be a little boring, but it was home to the little field mouse. And as for his city cousin, life for him went on the same. A constant race with that mean old cat from the food table to the safety of his attic home. And so the moral of Aesop's story is that the grass always looks greener on the other side of the fence, but the truth of the matter is there's no place like home.